Is this a bad idea? We're at the Devil's Pulpit, which is a well photographed area with this beautiful red rock and the walls of the river of the kind of canyon are covered in moss, so there's got red and green colours going on there. And it is absolutely perfect. But I've just parked up and um, it's busy. I had to park quite a wee bit away and there's a second, it's not so much a car park, more of a lay-by that it's a wee bit further down the road. So. Um, there's a lot of people here, there's even one of the, the tours minibuses, the tourist minibuses here. Um, and for the simple reason it is so beautiful here, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've come a different way than I normally do, I've been here a couple of times before, I'm usually on the other side of the, the river. Uh, but I've come this way now again just because, just to avoid the masses, <laughs> really. That's the main, the main reason coming this way, but I'll just give you a wee spinorama and show you I'm currently above it looking down to the to the river itself and I'll show you what I'm looking at. Well, we have made it to the Devil's Pulpit and this is uh, such a fantastic, such a strange, strange place got this beautiful kind of cathedral echo going on as well when I talk. But uh, this is further down from where the main, the, the, the main kind of, not so much the tourist attraction, but more people hang around that top bit, which is just kind of around the corner here. Um, but, so I usually tend to come down here initially to start with, just just to kind of get my mind in, in gear type and just, you know, enjoy the surroundings. You've got these beautiful ivies hanging down runners you've obviously got this you know red blood red water flowing through the kind of cave network and on the rock face you've got the moss you've got all the the creepers which are green so you've got that playing off with the red water as well it really is absolutely fantastic and dotted around it you've got boulders as well uh, just to really you know make it even more you know interesting and dramatic points to to aim your camera at so I've set up and I've done a couple of shots here. I'm obviously bracketing because it's very, very dark in and amongst the the, the bottom of this uh, this river here. Um, and up above you've got the sky, you've got the, the, the bright sky coming in. It's actually quite a nice day out there. Um, cloudy, but it's bright, so that's great because it really gives a bit of interest in some of the, the ferns and some of the foliage that's hanging on the rock face around about here. Okay, just to talk you through what I've actually been doing here. I've made... I've underexposed this quite considerably because, not right now, but the light that's coming from the sky is hitting. You see, there's a tree that's just, you know, cresting away from the rock face. And it's just coming over, and the light's it's just capturing those leaves, which is absolutely beautiful. And the rest of it's obviously dark and red, and it's got a kind of, you know, a very uneasy feeling about it but that light is just capturing those leaves just nice just to make that the prime focus and you've got this beautiful surrounding you know looping rock how it's been carved away over the over the years with the water that's come through here and that just sits perfectly right in the middle it's naturally framed by you've got the red water you've got the, the brickwork the rock face coming through and you've got that sole tree that's getting illuminated by the light so it's just just nice. It's starting to darken up quite a bit now, so I'm glad I got there because it's now not lit up at all. Um, so I'm going to venture across the river and um, I might actually head up in there to take some photos because, again, this is an area that's it's not as busy as around the corner, which, which uh, sees a lot of people um, to come to, to view this place. Seems to be a common theme in my videos. Go to a place, get there, set up, then the heavens open. 
past three times. Past three videos that's happened. Fortunately this time I'm under canopy so it's not too bad. Right, so since I'm under canopy here I am going to just set up and take a shot here. Um, it's not ideal. I've I was wanting to get kind of lower down right in to the into the rock face itself and look, you know, kind of round corners and you know, hopefully get nice shafts of light. But the light has completely gone. Obviously, there's just grey clouds full of rain above us now. Um, I might check dark sky to see if this is just a passing shower or it's going to be on for the day. It was supposed to be fine. I did look already, and it was supposed to start raining a wee bit later today, but not now. So hopefully, it's just a passing shower. Um, and I'll be able to explore a wee bit further. So I really want to get in deep. That's why I brought these water shoes with me. Just so I can get into these areas without, you know, that's, that aren't normally photographed. Because people usually just, uh, rightly so, stay in high ground, stay in dry ground uh, and shoot from there. So if you come to popular photography locations, you've got to start thinking a wee bit differently just to capture a different image than what the thousands and thousands of other people have already captured of this area. Is this a bad idea? <laughs> well, I just about went into the water there. I was kind of scrambled along the rock face looking for somewhere to put my bag so I can get my camera out because I was, as you saw, I was pretty much on the water on a... Um, a log. It was partially submerged, so there was nowhere I could have put my bag, so I decided I'll climb the rock face a wee bit. Should be okay, because there was a flat level just beyond. Didn't manage to get there and got, I went just like a shoot, right down, holding, holding on as I was sliding just to make sure I didn't go into the water, because I still obviously had my bag on my back at that point, um, with my camera and everything in it, so yeah, that could have been. Could have been a, a sad story, uh, but I, I mean I got wet a wee bit, but it's not a problem. I got absolutely clarty, as you can probably tell. Um, not best, but hey ho, live to fight another day and all that. So I've moved on to uh, considerably more solid ground after my my recent tumble. Uh, so this is further up from where we were before, upstream. And what we have here, we've got waterfalls and we've got really interesting carved rocks. So I'm trying to capture that, shooting the waterfall through the curved rock, the kind of cut out of that rock. Uh, again, it's got that red, it's got the moss, uh, got the polarizer on there as well as a, a grad filter, um, just to cut some of the glare from, from above and to really bring out the red rocks which are lying just below the surface of the water. So cutting out the reflection in that respect and um, that way they are going to come out and they're going to be really quite vibrant. So yeah, there's quite a few possibilities around about here. I'm going to try higher up as well, looking over this uh, kind of carved out rock formation. And I uh, yeah, just looking around, it really is. It's just getting to the places and there's lots of shapes, there's lots of different things going on. And the problem there is it, it can make a, I mean, it's great to look at, but photography wise, it just gets a wee bit too chaotic, a bit busy. And that's what you've got to be mindful of. If you're here yourself, you're looking around this kind of awe-inspiring spot. But as a photographer, you've got to try to convey what your your surroundings are through through a photograph. And it's not easy when there's so much to choose from, there's so much going on. You can get quite uh, overcome by it actually. What we're also getting is quite nice, you can see, but because of the waterfall that's up there, it's creating this disturbance in the water, and you're getting those bubbles. 
And because it's a quite dark, so that the exposure is quite a long exposure, you're getting these um, bubbles that are passing past the front of the, the camera and they're creating a white line, a leading line. It takes you away from the waterfall and down through the rocks, which is quite nice. So I'm going to call it a day now, I, uh, I got quite wet when I was in the water there so I'm starting to chill up a wee bit but I uh, got some really good shots, I'm quite happy with the, the different areas I explored, um, I'm glad that there's very little uh, people around, sound like a bit of a misanthrope but I'm honestly not, it's just for photography, it's hard when you're fighting against uh, other people that are, you know, they're here to do the same, they're here to photograph, they're here to experience it and things like that. But it's, um, it just makes it a wee bit trickier. But it's good just to have the place to myself, which is great. You can just explore a wee bit without the pressure of feeling you're getting into someone else's shot. As I said, there's usually lots of photographers here. And on my way down, I had a look from up above and um, sure enough, there was, there was quite a few, just in this area, there's quite a few photographers already here. So, I think, as I said, that the rain earlier on, although where we were was quite sheltered, this is quite open, this area, as you might be able to tell. So, I think that might have scared quite a few people away. I checked on Dark Sky, the app Dark Sky, which is a great wee app, and it just, it, it was just passing showers, there was nothing more to that than that. So I just hung around. By the time I got to this popular area, which is more, uh, more accessible, um, everyone else had vanished so worthwhile just you know checking to see what the forecast is doing uh, and if, it, if time allows just holding out managing to stay as dry as you possibly can as I said I did get a wee bit wet but um, worth it worth it to get some nice shots in the end so I do hope you enjoyed that I hope at some point you'd if you're into photography and exploring Scotland, you do make it here. It's not far from either Edinburgh or Glasgow. It's right in the centre belt, so easy to get to. Um, the only issue is there's parking limitations. You've really got to... There's only a couple of official areas you can park. Kind of a, nothing more than a bit of a lay-by. And consequently, they get booked up. Well, not booked up, but they get filled pretty quickly. Um, so sometimes you can get here and you're just kind of hanging hanging about waiting before you can actually get a, a space to park but it's certainly worthwhile the visit it's a great place um, it's just so different that's the good thing about it you've got so many different colors going on the actual the, the architecture of the the, the the rock with its the strange kind of carvings out because of the, the what the water's done over the thousands and thousands of years uh, really makes it quite uh, quite an interesting place just to explore really fascinating but I shall leave you there, I'm packed up now I will head back, scramble my way back up to the car uh, and head home um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it like and subscribe, all that good stuff and um, I'll catch you guys on the next video take care